Ever wonder how heavy steel reinforcement coils are transformed with precision, straightened, cut, welded, and bent to perfection with automation to create custom wall panels full of green code technologies? Stay tuned. So the mesh welding machine works quite similar to the machine that we've just seen here. If everything comes from the coil, the coil is straightened, uh, cut to length, okay. and then are welded together, pointed together. So we are just going to head up here to the left, see how the mesh welding machine is working. You can already hear it a little bit. What you see here is the welding part, so you see the welding oh, heads, yeah. and Amazing. back here on the left, the bar straightening, cutting. Yeah. Then they are placed on this table. The machine picks it up, drags it forward, mm -hmm. and then they are welded together. These are all different size coils, so the machine automatically adjusts based on the profile of the coiled rebar that it needs. Yes, based on the design from the structural engineer at the beginning. So uh, whatever the structure, external structural engineer designed, yeah. our engineers take it over into the design process and it's then automatically produced according to the production data. Got it, got it. And also the geometry of the mesh is actually individual. So it's really down to where the openings or the spacings, where uh, a window or a door frame is. Uh, additional bars reinforcement for this can automatically be uh, placed inside the mesh and then yeah. welded on. So this all goes that way through the straightening machine and then comes back into here. And that's what we're seeing being welded now. This is what uh, where the welding process is done. And after the welding process is finished, it moves up forward. The little machine you see here at the end, yeah. it's actually an automated bender. For some of our products, we need to bend the end of the elements. So it actually can bend the whole mesh together or individually yeah. bend. So it automated all the way through and then gets to a bender and the bender knows exactly where and how much to bend. Yes, and where and how much to bend. And at the end, we have uh, six storage spaces. Either it goes into storage or it goes directly just in time onto the pallet. Yeah. Really depending on the cycle time, on what kind of projects are being done and so on. Perfect. So there is a lot of autom optimization and optimization also done by the MES system, by the machine execution software right. system. Right. Perfect. So mesh is done, mesh is bent. Where are we going next? Now we are heading back again to a manual labor station. When we head down, we see on the table the mesh, the girder on top, and then there is the finalizing of the product. So if we have additional parts, like a concrete upstand or something like this, this is placed at this station where we're heading now. Perfect. So for me. Yeah, and what are they doing on the manual labor station here? In this yeah. case, they're placing the electrical uh, boxes onto the magnets. Uh -huh. They are fixing specialized material. Additional reinforcement can be placed inside here or cages or anything that needs to be done here. So here at this station, the people are working and putting the additional reinforcement inside. Also those concrete upstands that we saw at the end, those uh, concrete parts which go around right, the edge are placed here into the pallet and then fixed and then it moves on to the automated process. So then the table was here, it's now moved to the next station, ready to go. And it looks like that's heading to the concrete. Yes, there is a final inspection check here. The foreman will go have a look with special elements. If there is like a, a special element which really needs to be like punching reinforcements or shear reinforcement, okay. and where it's also very, very important that it's checked, that it's correctly inserted. This is the final checking station yeah. before then a picture is made for documentation purposes that we really build it in and then the concreting is done. Got it, great, great. So where do we go now? So I think we'll head back to the concreting station and have a look where the concrete is actually poured into the pallets. All right, cool. So this is where they're pouring the concrete uh, into the trays that were set up. You gotta watch out for those sensors. I almost walked right through one. Everything is safety protected here. I think that's what's really interesting too. Like these uh, yellow lasers here st shut down everything. Yeah, 30 down centimeters, <laughs> otherwise uh, it doesn't work. Well, yeah. uh, there are certain areas which are automatic and certain areas where there is a dead man switch. So it's just to keep the worker safety and right. uh, so that nothing can go wrong. What are we doing here then? Uh, in this in this station here, we are concreting. So the automated concrete spreader over here yeah. is spreading the concrete. 
afterwards it's the question if it's a first or a second layer yeah. of the element if it's a first layer we are going to vibrate it and then it goes directly into the curing chamber right behind me right if it's a second layer it will drive to this station over here okay where you see in the back actually yeah. here we see the first layer which was produced eight at least right. eight hours ago right. or or yesterday which will be picked up flipped over and then put into the right. next element. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What is done at this station is that there is the first layer element yesterday or eight hours ago. It came out of the curing chamber with the right concrete consistency and it's going to be vibrated again to get all the air out of the element. And then it goes for another eight hours into the curing chamber. All right, so on this side, they're dropping the concrete. It's really cool because the concrete actually comes from the other end of the factory. Yes comes over, dumps into a hopper, I guess. That hopper drops it into the tray, and then with that tray, then they vibrate it, because it all it settles and gets out the air pockets, yes. but it also levels all that concrete out. Yes, and the really interesting part is that you are not allowed to get it too smooth, because you still need to have friction for the on-site concrete to compact, so you want to have the right amount of shaking, the right amount of vibration right. to still have enough surface texture to get it with the on-site concrete uh, combined. Even on the vibration side, there's science behind it. There is, uh, on everything you have here, there is uh, science, reason. it's a question, it's reason, it's knowledge and it's experience, and, uh, something that we can convey to all the clients out there. Right. So the vibration table also shakes it in several directions, not just one direction, right? No, we, uh, we usually shake it in one direction, then we have also a crosswise direction uh, it. shaking it. It's really depending on the concrete grade and what we are doing and elements. Right. So also this is everything is controlled by the master control system right. from the factory headquarter over here and send it to production data to the machines. Got it. And I think behind us now they're dumping the concrete over yes. here. Yes, they are just currently concreting over here. Right. What we're looking at right now, where they're doing the concrete and the rebar, that's the first thats the first layer of this. And then on the machine behind us, so I understand, that's one that's already gone into the drying rack, right? Which is kept roughly, uh, you said about 70 degrees? 35 degrees Celsius, between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius. Yeah. It really depends also on the outside temperature. There are several factors right. which go into this equation. Uh, it depends on the outside humidity and right. outside temperature. It goes into the drying racks, right? Then it comes out on this side, is that correct? Into yes. this machine. In this machine, uh, which clamps the element uh, right. down, picks it up, flips it over, and puts it into the next... Uh, puts it into the new set of concrete. Yes. So now you have both sides of the wall with the exact spacing that needs to happen. Yes. And everything in it that you need, whether it's MEPs, plumbing, acoustics, doesn't matter. Everything the client wants. All right, so let's walk over and let's talk about some of the acoustic features and the insulation features that you're putting in. And this, this is some of the green code stuff. Yes. So where are we going next? I think we are going ahead to the box master uh, to show you where the boxes are being placed. Yeah. If you are placing an acoustic ceiling or an eco slab, and then we head over to see where insulation is uh, being done. Okay. Perfect. So what we see behind here uh, is one of the specialized green coat products that is being produced or the, the machine that produces it. So we have for the acoustic or acoustic climatic panel or the eco slab, we have recycling boxes which are being placed automatically by the robot inside of the element. And they are still being placed during when the concrete is wet so that the box is actually fixed to the element. And then it goes back into the curing chamber. Got it. So these boxes have a flange on it. Can I grab one of them here? Yeah, yeah, sure. Let me grab a box. So this is the box. The robot's holding it there. And as you're seeing, it's pushing it down in. And then this flange is what locks it into the concrete. Yeah, the, actually only this part is uh, based in the concrete. And uh, after hardening process, you cannot get it out. You really need pliers, uh, right. big pliers to get it out. You need Thor. With his hammer? Yeah, with a hammer. On site, then uh, the box is being placed on site. And on top of the box, the, the last pieces of reinforcement are placed, pouring of concrete and the element is finished. And the purpose of this box? The purpose is to reduce weight of the element. And by reducing the weight the of the panels, the panels, if it's just an eco slab, it's reducing the weight of the panels. And you can reduce the weight by more than 25%. 
so you can save uh, reinforcement, you right. save concrete, you save CO2, make it more sustainable. And you can even create longer span right. elements. This is the, the first and foremost benefit of the solution. In the acoustic solution, uh, we are filling the, the box on site with mineral insulation, just, and we have the openings on the bottom side, just to get the sound optimized or the acoustic optimized. Like the conference room we're sitting in, that is a concrete ceiling. And it wasn't good enough that you reduced the weight. You said, well, we can also make sound panel reduction qualities out of this as well. And it's really aesthetically pleasing to look at. It is definitely aesthetically pleasing and you reduce the overall height of the, the slab. This is the major benefit. You right. do not need a lowered ceiling since all the building services run through the, the element and right. you can then even can build higher than that. Perfect. So we reduced the weight. We added sound insulation as well with the same box. But if you're not doing the sound insulation, it also adds insulation between the structure because air is a good insulator. Yes, this is it's done. Sadly, uh, during this run through, we didn't see any uh, climatic ceiling, but the process would be uh, more or less the same. It is pre-produced and then placed together with the mesh in the element yeah. and then it runs through the... We'll show you some b-roll on that yes. and you guys can actually see how that's installed. That's just not part of the project running through right now. Yeah, it's just, just uh, you cannot have everything at the same time. Yeah, you won't stop manufacturing no. for Dave Cooper just so we can show that? No, no, it's not possible. <laughs> One day I'll get there. All right, where are we heading to next? I think now we are going to move outside and walk to the demolding area where we uh, just have a look at the end of the process where the elements are being taking off with the pallet, yeah. put in uh, on transport stacks, and then they're transported out either to storage or directly to the site. Excellent, so at this door? Yeah, we're just gonna head out here.